بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب all of us face different trials and tribulations in our lives and it's easy to give advice about these issues but when it comes to practice practicing patience practicing taqullah this can be a very difficult thing for all of us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success because all of our success comes from Allah and lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of our success is with Allah. And this brings up a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will help you when you are in times of struggle and difficulty. When you are facing poverty, when you can't pay your rent, when you find yourself evicted, when you find yourself in divorce, when you find yourself having marital discord, when you find yourself immersed in sin, when you find yourself unemployed, whatever the situation is, you can always find a stronghold with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always Allah will be the one to answer your supplication and, and the one to give you ease. And it is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's in His hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we should put our trust and our faith in. An ibn Abbasin radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala kuntu khalfa nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawman qala faqal ya gulam inni u'allamuhu kalimat affid Allah yahfadhak أفض الله تجده تجاهك إذا سألت فأسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله واعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعك بشيء لم ينفعك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى لك وإن اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى عليك رفية الأقلام وجفت الصحوف رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح In this hadith that was narrated in Tirmidhi by Imam Tirmidhi رحمه الله تعالى The hadith of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تلا عنه رضي الله تلا عنهما who was behind the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, Gulam, you know, O oh, oh boy, verily I will teach you uh, something or teach you a word or teach you a statement. And then he said, preserve the commandments of Allah or protect the commandments of Allah, meaning don't go beyond the bounds, and Allah will protect you. And preserve the commands of Allah, and you will find Him in front of you. If you ask, ask of Allah. And if you seek help and support, then seek help and support from Allah. And know that if the nations had gathered together to benefit with you, benefit you in something, they would not be able to benefit you except what Allah has written for you. And if the nations gathered together to harm you, they would not be able to harm you except with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you. The pin has been lifted and the ink is dried. Ayol Ahbab, when we look at this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are immense benefits and we'll try to highlight a few. One of the things 
is putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whatever has befallen you, trying to adhere to the commandments of Allah, maintaining taqwa, guarding the boundaries of Allah, you'll have success and Allah will guard you. So this is an important reminder. I'm reminding myself first and reminding my brothers and sisters second to preserve the bounds of Allah. Do everything possible to do the halal and stay away from the haram and have taqwa Allah And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you in your uh, situation. For example, one of the recent trials that our brothers and sisters are faced with for example, in Yemen, they're being attacked by the Shia Rafida, Houthi, Houthiin, who are attacking them for nothing other than their creed, because they're from Ahl Sunnah, because they're from Ahl Iman, because they're teaching Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they are a major source of spreading that khair around the world. May Allah bless us in them and forgive us in them and guide us in them and give them strength. Give us strength and give them strength. I mean and preserve them. So it's upon them and upon us to preserve the commandments of Allah first and foremost so that we can have the protection of Allah. Protect Allah's commandments and Allah will protect you. Another benefit derived from this hadith, ayyul ahbab, is this hadith said where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fi dasta'antu fi billah. If you seek help, seek it from Allah, Azza wa Jal. Ayyul Ahbab, this is a direct refutation of Jamaat al Ahbash and the extreme Sufis. And anyone who tells you that you should make supplication or that it's permissible to supplicate to the graves and supplicate to the dead and seek uh, refuge in the dead and to go to the dead from the Salihin from the saints. Those people say you should make tawaf around their graves or you should offer food for them so that they can protect you. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا إِسْتَعَنْتُ فَإِذَا إِسْتَعَنْتُ فَإِسْتَعَنْ بِاللَّهِ That's a command. The Prophet ﷺ said it in the imperative form. He said, if you seek help, then seek it from Allah. And the ulama say that al-amr you feed the wujub. That whenever there's a commandment in the Sharia from Kitabillah or Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the asl or the origin of that command means that it's an obligation. So when it's uh, a commandment from the from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or a commandment from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the in the imperative form, "Fi the sta'antif sa'in billah." If you seek help, seek it from Allah. Then this is the imperative form. This is a command showing that it's an obligation to seek refuge in Allah, not in His creation. And the only way that that changes, meaning the com that a command goes from being an obligation to something which is recommended or one of the other ahkam, is if there is evidence from Kitab Allah or Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show us that that amr has changed Yusraf al Hada Amr il al Mustahab al Istahbab or something like this. That if the command, there's evidence in the Quran or evidence in the Sunnah to show that the command has now been changed from other uh, evidence showing that it is, is no longer an obligation, that it is something recommended or that it is something uh, one of the other ahkam. So Ayyul Ahbab, those are two very important benefits that we can gain from that hadith to put our trust in Allah to seek refuge in Allah and preserve the commandments of Allah. And the third point I want to mention is when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَلَوْ اجْتَمِعُوا أَنْ يَنْفَعُكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى لَكْ So if they, لَوْ اجْتَمِعَتْ If they, commit, if they uh, gather together to benefit you with something, they cannot benefit you except with what Allah has written for you. SubhanAllah, that is a direct, that makes me reflect on my own situation and my own struggles. That 
No one can benefit me, even if they gather together to benefit me, except with what Allah has written. Again, returning you back to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe in the divine decree of Allah, put your trust in Allah, and do amal, and, and strive. Ayyul Ahbab, this brings up another point I want to bring up with, within this, is that it's important that we, we put our trust truly in Allah, tawakkal ala Allah. And tawakkal ala ayyul ahbab, as the ulama say, is ittimad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. That you put your trust in Allah, you, you give your affairs to Allah, and you do actions to achieve it. So don't say, hey, I need money, but I'm not going to work. I need a wife, but I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to strive to get married. I need uh, something to change in my life, but I'm not going to make any changes. So rather, true balance, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is striving to better yourself. You want victory, but you don't want to do anything to gain you victory. Ayyullah bab. That's very dangerous and very important for us to understand to walk Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal. And the last part of the hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, the Prophet said, and if they gather together, meaning the nations or anyone, to harm you, they wouldn't be able to harm you except for what Allah has already decreed for you. So Ayul Ahbab, in our various trials and tribulations, and our various struggles, and even our brothers and sisters who are being attacked in Syria, our brothers and sisters who are being attacked in Yemen, in the north of Yemen by the Shia, and all of these are at the hands of the Shia, the brothers and sisters being persecuted, persecuted in Iraq at the hands of the Raf of the Shia, in, in, in Iran, which is the Ras, the head of all of the, the Shia, by Hezbollah attacking the, the Sunnis in, 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 uh, in Syria, and wherever around the world, wherever they're harming Ahl Sunnah, that they can't harm Ahl Sunnah truly unless it was written for us. So it begs the question, it allows for us to revisit ourselves, try our best to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it puts, helps us to build our Iman in the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and knowing that no one can harm you unless Allah has written it for you. So that should bring you some comfort and some bravery that hey they cannot harm me unless that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for me so that it helps to bring some ease to the heart and we ask Allah the Almighty for success in this life as well as the hereafter and may Allah protect us and protect our brothers and sisters in Islam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with al nafid us kintayibu amalim muttaqabilin and forgive us of our many shortcomings. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.